take one. This is Glenn driving a super capacitor powered forklift. Well, this is pretty awesome. Um, people say, is it real? Uh, do these things actually work? Well, uh, here's my first exposure to uh, the Kilowatt Labs 7, no, 3.5 kilowatt hour super cap. I keep calling it a battery though. You know, I've got to get my head around this. This is not a battery. This is an energy storage device. This is a 21st century energy storage device being used here to run a regular forklift. Now I'm going to have a go at uh, just trying to drive this thing. We'll see how we go. And again, just showing the load current operating the forks and up again, again. down and up. And left and right. And do left and right and, and up and down at the same time. <laughs> so Paul, do I get my ticket now? I've managed to go, do a full circle, go up and down and not hit anything. Well that's pretty much all a forklift driver does all day anyway. So. <laughs> Well, I'm super impressed uh, that this thing actually runs off a tiny battery pack, uh, which I believe is, would be a similar cost to a, a replacement lead asset uh, for this system. Less than half the price. Less than half the price. Uh, stop telling me all this good not, news. Not less range. <laughs> but you can charge it while you're having a tea break. How about we go and charge it now? Okay, let's go and charge it. That's the charger there. Yeah. Just unplug the cap from the forklift here. Plug it into the charger here. And come around to this display here if you can get around there and see that. I'll turn that on there. So it's on zero amps right now. So we're just charging up the super cap. Uh, it's a measure 48 volts of the capacitor. So the capacitor is at uh, this is an 80 amp charge. 49.3 at the moment. It's charging at 80 amps and rising. That's all it can do. It's the maximum Which is, charge uh, current. So the limit actually is the charger. Uh, what is the maximum charge current you can push into these? 450 amps, wow. Maybe 500. <laughs> I haven't tried yet. Technic cool. Technically, I can do 1,000. Yeah. It's just a question of conductor temperature. Cool. So you go around to the plumb around the other side, you see the display. Yeah, it's right. So it's 80 amps. So it's at 25 degrees Celsius right now, and it's at 49 volts. So it's just filling up gently up to 54 volts. Um, once it gets to 54, we just turn it off and it's full. But there's no equalization charge, there's no balancing charges, there's no gassing, there's no restriction. It's just full power charge to full and then you turn it off. Same thing with going to empty. You have full power all the way to empty. It doesn't actually reduce its performance as the battery gets flatter, which is quite important with a forklift. You have full performance all the way down to low. Well, um, it sounds like someone just wrote a spec for the ideal energy storage device and here it is. It's here. It's a question of now how do we how do we deploy it? Where does it go first? Cool. So peaking plants is a big one, obviously. Um, load shedding, um, peaking, peaking reduction on the batteries. Uh, because it can be charged a million times, you could get rid of you know, 200 peaks per day to keep a factory's demand down below a certain limit to get a much lower power bill. What about EVs? Brewing for EVs. Um, the guys at Kilowatt Labs have fitted out a Nissan Leaf. They pulled out lithium ion batteries and threw them away, put the super caps in and they've got a two minute charger for it. So you pull up at McDonald's, plug it in, pull away and you're full. So it's quite amazing. And if, if you haven't got enough energy available at McDonald's, for example, bad example, but at McDonald's, then you could have a storage bank of these as a reservoir. 
and you literally dump the load of the large bank into the small bank just by plugging them in together. Then there's no charger needed. Just a question of um, plugging them together in parallel. And how thick your cables are? And how big your cables are. That's the only, only limit is the conductor thickness. So we put a thermal camera on this, we pulled it apart with thermal video to running it at 200 amps and the conductors got up to about 70 degrees Celsius. Um, so we backed it off. I think we sat at about 180 amps and it seemed to handle it pretty well continuously. But peaking wise it doesn't care because it's connected directly from the terminals to the capacitor. So there's no resistance or conversion of energy anywhere in the system. Cool. Okay, thanks Paul.